I knew I hadn't finished off Reed Dr. Pepper Big Q with purchase of any grilled cheese. Wasn't particularly proud of that. Big thing of Indian scammers to try and squeeze something out before my parents get here. Ronnie Ramsbottom Third. I've realized recently that I've been starting to try and plan out what I was, what I would be saying as I turn on the camera, which is not the way things were planned. All right, so last night I just did that audio section. You did get a nice snippet of me, to be fair. One really nice picture in there. But that just audio section, it felt really different. And it was... <clears throat> I knew I hadn't finished off yesterday's video, or at least, like, said, that's the end. So I stuck. I just... I was like, I, I can't hold the camera out and record it again. So screw it, let's just try it on its own, just with the audio. And it felt quite nice just to ramble about topics that I, I guess, kind of half planned out. Uh, we are getting, there. what was it? Oh yeah, I have a conversation today with Restore Wellness, the place I did the final part of the sauna series in. So I have that in a couple of hours need to get some petrol first, some gas. So we've got that, and then my wife has an appointment, so I'll be looking after Rugi. So there's not going to be much time for work today, but I will be driving up to the airport later, which is about 45 minutes or so. And so we'll do, we'll do one of these little numbers. But I am hoping to get a little bit of work done first this morning. I get in these situations like where... I know my parents are coming, like where I have something coming up, and I use that as an excuse not to go pick up the nose, not to start a task. So I'm like, oh, there's no point starting it now because I won't get finished in time. That's like one of my problems to stop starting. I don't really. Let's go and fill up. I don't really. I don't know, I shouldn't feel like that because it's not like I probably need my car, don't I? It's not like I have real problems with getting started on things. Like I can break things down as we've kind of, I guess we've seen in here. And so, like, what is that? Is that just me being lazy or am I making a good decision? I guess part of me is thinking there's no rush to try and squeeze something out before my parents get here. Especially if it's, you know, not as good as I want it to be. I'm not saying I'm a perfectionist. That was nice. That worked really well. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm a perfectionist, like far from it. But I don't want to put out crap, you know? Like all the time spent planning to fail on one part of it just seems like a waste. You have, you have to click the button. Got a new one of these this time. What have we got on offer? Free Dr. Pepper Big Q with purchase of any grilled cheese. What the fuck is in that? That's like a pulled barbecue pulled pork grilled cheese sandwich. Interesting. Siri. Pod vlog quickie. I hate that you have to unlock the phone for that. I'm going to need to change that. Uh. Oh, you little bell end. Screen went off. Oh, yeah. A fairly interesting situation yesterday or the day before. It's a two-lane road. I'm on the right lane and I'm driving behind a guy who's going super slow. So a car overtakes on my left and I decide to get over and that's like a good speed that I want to go at. So I get behind this guy, driving at a good speed. I'm, I'm good with not going any faster because the speed limit. <laughs> and then the guy in the lane that I just pulled out from speeds up like crazy and goes just goes off into the distance. And I was about to pull back over into that lane. Of, uh, it was like my mind was telling me, oh, well, now they're going faster, so you have to go as fast as them. 
And why is that interesting? Do I want a receipt? No, I don't. Why is that interesting? It's because someone else was con someone else almost controlled my behavior even though I didn't really care for it. Like I didn't need to go any faster. I didn't want to go any faster. And I almost I was moving my hand to put my blinker on my indicator on when I realized I just thought that's really interesting. That's a perfect example of where because someone else is doing it, you think you should do it too, or you think that it's the right thing to do. I'm above that. I'm above that matrix stuff, aren't I? I know all of this. I don't know where that came from. That kind of just, that came out. Shouldn't have come out. Pod vlog quickie. Uh, oh yeah, I was watching the Paddy Bimblet. Just watch, just watching, I guess, an MMA fight on TikTok. And I don't know about you, but I'm sat there just getting more and more tense throughout the whole fight. Is that normal? Do you do that too? Also, other question. The intros to these videos where I like take just random segments and try and make a weird sentence out of them at the beginning is that do you like that or is it just kind of like oh this is weird um yeah like it's kind of fun to me it takes a long time though actually i think for what those 10 seconds it takes me i go through the video and I'll try and pick out segments that I think are funny, but then I need to try and make those all match together in a sentence that I haven't yet figured out what that sentence is yet. And then once I figured out what the sentence is, I'm going back into the video to try and find specific lines that will fit that and, ma and make it make somewhat sense. At least a little bit of sense. That was kind of fun. I bought this book the other day. I haven't gotten around to reading it yet. It's called The Art of Learning. I don't know who it's by. It's got a white cover, some text on the front, may probably some text on the back and maybe even some in the middle, but I haven't picked it up to read it yet. Oh, that's actually really bad. I have so many books. I don't know if I, I think I mentioned this as well, that I used to read like 30 minutes. I used to wake up, walk the dogs, read, and then go to the gym. But since having these videos to edit, I just stopped reading. And I feel like I have a million things going on at any one time to try and do. I saw this video yesterday about a guy talking, I guess he was some scientist, I guess, I guess, I guess, talking about ADHD and how the normal adhd -er struggles with seeing a task out in the future and getting it done ahead of time. And instead, they have time blindness, blindedness, blindness. And instead, wait until the task is like right on top of them at the 11th hour to then start doing. And I'm... I would say I'm definitely a firm believer in the idea that based on my experience with what's called ADHD, it doesn't mean you can't do things. It just means you have to find a way to manage that thing you're trying to do in a way that you can actually start it and finish it. It doesn't mean that just because you have ADHD, you can't do something. That's ridiculous. There's always a way. Oh, God, what the stupid thing to say. And there's always a way to do it. Thank you. Sometimes I make myself want to throw up and then I, I hold my head down and eat that again, you idiot. Also, that kind of comment i know a lot of people would be like oh you shouldn't talk down to yourself like bitch come on i can deal with that 
me in two years with mental issues. We're just going to get bleach. You know, come in. I always struggle going shopping and not picking out just crappy food that I want. Because that's all I want all the time. Did I bring my wallet? I did. Good boy, Oliver. Like, I really struggle with not buying crisps. Actually, it's gotten easier as I've gotten older, as I've gotten far more mature. Like, try not to buy crisps, try not to buy chocolate, candy, sweets. Because I have no, I don't really have much self-control. Once the bag's open, I'll just finish it. Like, I think I've polished off a bag, a box of Mike and Ike's in about an hour or two the other night. That wasn't, wasn't particularly proud of that. Okay, we're not doing the cart, the shopping trolley today, because that is too much bloody effort. It's funny, they changed up this Walmart that I'm in, like re, I wouldn't say redecorated, but reorganized everything. And it's so much easier to find stuff. But all the people that were complaining when it first happened, like, you can't find anything. Well, obviously, because you don't know where anything is. But if you use your eyes, you could probably find stuff. My wife and her family have this. Bella, it annoys me, but it, it's nothing to do with me, so it doesn't matter. Uh, where the f is the cleaning solution? <laughs> I just literally just proved my own point. Uh, yeah, they'll call each other with a problem and pass it on to one of the others, like to try and solve for them. But it's really weird because like in one part you look at that as lazy but the other part they'll all do it for each other they'll all take a task from the other person no questions asked and just and like solve it for them whereas for me i'm like what the hell would you call me with that problem <laughs> i'll help you but what the hell would you call me for? Try and solve that yourself. I find it, I actually, I guess that's one of my traits. I find it quite frustrating when I don't see, I might, I think I might actually be quite hard to work with. Where the f is the bleach? Oh yeah, it's down this way. Yeah, it might be quite hard to work with because, but I, I feel like for a professional sense, I'm doing it the right way. Like what I mean is uh, the way I expect business to be done. The way, it's, yeah, the way I think of being professional, I would expect that of someone else. And when someone doesn't do that or provide that, that kind of thing annoys me. And I get, I wouldn't say I get on them immediately. I'll give them a few tries. But I would like things done in a professional manner I don't know where I'm going with that I'm trying just give me a second right stop stop jumping down my throat might be on the other side this is bleach and stuff isn't it do you remember during covid you couldn't find bleach or cleaner anywhere I'll give you some examples of what I was talking about in a minute so that's all Clorox wipes. I'm not stupid, it's just not he here. Here it is. Yeah. Okay. yeah Sorry, thank you. Nah. Oh, 
452, I guess that'll do. It's a bloody big thing of bleach, isn't it? Um, sorry, I think so. Okay, yeah, so here's, here's an example. If we're emailing back and forth and I'm expecting some information from you, and you're trying to get that information from someone else and like you've told me or there's the expectation that you should get back by the end of that day, then even if you don't have that information, you should be emailing that person to say, just quick update, still trying to get this information, didn't come through, here's when I'll provide the next update. Things like that that I think are just a, just a normal practice in business. And when people aren't doing those things, it frustrates me. I find like if we're going to work together, we have to set out what my expectations are, what your expectations are, and how we each get to those. Like how we make sure that you and I can actually work together. And you could say a lot of that is on me. Morning. How are you doing? Good. <laughs> But I'm not willing to sacrifice that kind of style of working because I think that is by far the best. Like I'll obviously budge on, well, hopefully I would budge on other areas that aren't as important to me, but maybe important to the other person. We had this thing in... Um, Yeah, we had this thing in my old job. It wasn't just for my job, it was for like the framework that we used for actually working. And we, we would always create a working agreement when we started new projects. So the IT team, the software developers, QA, like quanti qualitative, quant I can't even can say it. And the business line and whoever else is involved like project managers or scrum masters PM Scrum Master, like me, shouldn't be the same, but is. Uh, making sure that everyone understands how things will work together, how the people will work together, like when updates are to be provided, how long of notice do you want to provide when something isn't going well? What are the expectations if going live date isn't to be met? Uh, how do you want to be emailed? Like if the business line has questions or if the IT line has questions how do you do those as a project manager I probably have a view most people hate now I love the idea of a software engineer going straight to the business line to ask a question about requirements like so let's choose something basic the color of this button right? you want it this way but we can do it this way I like the idea of that immediate like taking out the middleman, which would be someone like myself. But what I love about someone in my role is that you get to be that, um, that filter, the barrier between, so that the business line can get their work done without being handed with questions from the software developers. The software developers can actually code instead of being handed with questions from the business line, which is typically the way around it goes and the software developers hate that. I say that having also been a software developer. And being that person in the middle to uh, protect, you would call it protect both sides. Like you always want to protect your team from more things coming in because if you don't have that and you have software developers who are happy to work on the next best thing, especially when the business line are adding pressure, you find that the scope of the project increases, other tasks get put on the wayside and don't get done, and then you get to a place where you're like, what the hell happened? We're not gonna meet our goal, and we've got all these other features and work done that we didn't need to get done. I literally have no idea how we got onto that topic. Communication, that was it. <laughs> yeah, like I, I do like things done a certain way, 
and I do, it's probably, there's probably actually a flaw of mine. I get frustrated when things aren't done in the way that I think is a professional way, not just necessarily my way. But I think if you would, the way I think about my way being right is I'll look at a, an actual list of all the qualities you would look at in a good, someone who does this job or this role and I compare how I do it up against that and if they match up pretty well then I would say that I'm doing it right and if it's not done that way then someone else needs to be taught or what. Hopefully I've explained that well enough that I'm just not a dick who expects everyone else to do things my way. I actually I'd quite like to do it someone else's way. I really like, I actually really like the idea of if I have an idea and someone else has another idea which actually turned out to be better, perfect. Like now I've just learnt of a new way to do something and to do it better. Alright, uh, take a detour and then go home. So. I'll see you. Let me get around this corner and then turn you off. Pick up a few more things. See you in a bit. Hi, Judah. All right, I'm cleaning up because the hot tub, the inflatable hot tub, don't be thinking we are swaggy out here, is going to go out the back here. So I'm just kind of cleaning off the dirty bits. I'm not sure. Should I... Like, why am I spending time thinking about whether I should use the blower first or use the brush first? I'll just use the blower first. Obviously, I can't talk while I'm doing that, sorry. Sid, I just put a flipping cotton wool bud behind my ear. I wonder if you'd be interested in this conversation. There always used to be this feeling that if a creator was going to partner with a brand that the creator and brand had to be super aligned. Like uh, you had to know all about their business, you had to merge together and it would be this, you fully stand with this company. And I was thinking about that this morning, like I've always kind of tried to consider that. But as I was thinking about it this morning, I'm thinking, why? Does it need to be that deep? Like, do I need to, do I really need to buy into a company's everything that they mean just to be able to use one of their products, just to be able to receive money from them? That's, that's essentially like saying, which one gives it air? This one, I think. That's essentially like saying, Oh, the place you work at? Yeah, you can't work there unless you fully embody exactly what they're doing. I guess those Indian scammers have kind of got a bit of a question to ask themselves, haven't they? Like, I'm, so I'm going to go in, in for that talk with that restore place in about 20, 30 minutes. And one of the questions I was asking myself not asking myself I was doing research on what are their financials like how are they doing what's their general feeling across social media what might they be looking for that I can consider beforehand and how can I help them which I think every person should do if they're going in for a deal especially if you're going to be doing the negotiations or you want to help out with the negotiation somehow in like providing additional value like let's let's be real here. If you went to, if you wanted to work with a brand like, I don't know, let's say Head and Shoulders, so under Procter and Gamble, the marketing budget for that is just insane. Like you wouldn't believe how much money is spent and how much money is available. So that kind of deal, you wouldn't go in at the same rate as a small business or even a business of this size like Restore. Like they're still fairly small in comparison. So I'm not gonna go in at that kind of rate, but it's also trying to understand what, what rate can they do? How much, maybe they are 
deciding that they need to put a lot more money into marketing and then that's their current change and this is like just one of their first steps to doing that and you could end up leaving a load of money on the table just because you didn't know that information all right Wrong hole. I think it goes in here. And I remember the trouble I had with this last time that I couldn't get it attached properly, so I just had to hold it. Let me pause while I do the noisy bit. And now we are doing the, what's it called? Oh, wrong bloody thing. The puncture repair. Look at my bag of all sorts. <laughs> all right, would I like to make sure this was all nice and clean and looking good? Yes, yes, of course, Oliver. Can I be asked with that? No, of course, Oliver. Oopsie pooper. It is um, bitingly cold out here. All right, lightly buff area. You know what, bruv? I'm going to lightly buff this, and then I'm going to put some alcohol on it. Let's get all the crap off. Sorry, yeah, the question out of that was, do you think that every influencer should fully align with the brand that they're about to work with? You know, the more I think about it now, the more I think no. Like, don't get me wrong. I... I really don't like the whole wokeness situation. Like, I, I think do whatever you need to do. You know, what keeps you happy, sure. But I'm not a fan of the wokeness stuff. I think it's a lot of attention seeking. And misunderstanding. And victimization. Lightly buff area around puncture with metal scuffer removing loose particles. Make sure the entire area, yep, bloody lovely. Squeeze moderate amount, moderate amount of rubber cement onto roughened surface and spread evenly. And then what? Because I've got to wait for that to dry. Work into material and scrape, F, scrape off excess. Like, I'm not talking that I'm going to go and cause a fuss with someone because they are woke. Like, I'll just let you do your own thing. As long as you let me do my thing, I'll do... You know, whether you let me do my thing or not, I'll still be doing my own thing. Uh, just, I'm just not interested in... wasting time on other people's opinions that don't really matter to me. They don't really have any impact. They don't... change the way I'm thinking. Don't improve my life. Remove foil backing. I guess we're not there yet, are we? Oh, lots of rubber cement. I can see the bubbles coming out of the cauldron in the middle. That is very nice. You might have outdone yourself there, Oliver. <laughs> the bar is pretty low. <laughs> okay. Work into material and scrape off excess. Oh dear. I've, I've done a good job of working it into the material. How much excess are we talking here? I guess so it becomes like sticky. Let's see how that does. Remove oil packing, apply to the plastic cover facing up and the orange side facing down. Okay. Be careful not to touch the exposed surface of the patch. Okay, all right, it doesn't say anywhere about leaving the cement. No. It's a harden or anything. It's probably already hardened with how cold it is here. Yeah, I've always said, like, if I get into a situation when I'm out and about in public where, I don't know, let's say, let's say a pronoun situation, and someone's like, you called me the wrong pronouns, I, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, you're an idiot, stop using pronouns. I'll be like, oh, well, okay, sorry. 
And then if it becomes more of an issue than just that, then I'll just remove myself from the situation. Like they don't need it. I don't need it. Like we can, we can carry along doing whatever we were doing symbiotically. I don't know if that is even going to fit. Siri, define symbiotically. Uh, in living in close physical association. Well, I guess we won't be living in phys l close physical association, would we? We would just be two people doing our thang. Oh, there's not enough glue on there, you absolute muppet. You know what they say, if there's not enough glue... I was about to make a Jew joke, but we're past those days, aren't we? Oh, sugars. We are far beyond those days, my good man. What was that all about? Those days where everything was, you stupid Jew, you effing Jew. That was weird, wasn't it? Seven nine twenty two. Okay. All right. Let's see if this can stick. Doesn't it's it's not looking promising at the moment. I'm telling you. Could do with something heavy to put on top, couldn't I? What could I use? Is that, that, that kind of block? It's like a cinder block over there. That might be ideal. Just don't see that the. I hate doing these things, by the way. Bloody hate them. Okay, let me grab a stone. I couldn't tell you why this is just lying around, but I'm hoping that's what we need. Maybe I'll just leave that for a few hours. Yeah. All right. Let's put everything away. And then I'm going to have another look at Restore Place's social media accounts. I need to fill this up with water later, by the way, and get it turned on. I think it takes about two days. So I've left it about two days too late. We'll see if that fixes first. Madame, okay, let's go inside. All right, you juicy Lucy goose. Uh, the hot tub is, has been set up. It's currently just warming up. And I was gonna take you to, you know, on the drive up to go and pick my parents up from the airport since they'll be staying for the next week but you've been trumped I'm taking my son you know I, I would much prefer you guys but of course I would prefer my son looking forward to it um, so I thought I kind of talked through first of all got to get this looking nice I guess what I've been doing the other thing the conversation I had at the restore place, they liked, essentially, I mean, the initial thought they had was like an ambassadorship, but not on your typical social media term. It was like, you get four free credits to do something and then we'll give you half off other things. To which point my reply was just business perspective. I can a lot offer a lot more value than what that is in the exchange for. So gave them a good idea of what we were looking for uh, in terms of both somewhat of a price and then looking at like a monthly stipend type thing. Going on this idea that what if I, you know, let's say a monthly thing looks like maybe one TikTok a month or two TikToks a month or something and maybe doing like a sauna section in this video. Don't know, still building it out, but not, uh, what's it called? Expectations are not very, are not particularly high with that. There's a lot of room. There's a lot of distance to go to make up from what they were planning on offering versus what I would accept. So at this point, I've been sorting out all the loose ends since I won't be really touching my computer over the next week. 
So sorting out all the loose ends and then getting the room tidied up. Uh, so I figured it's our last time together for a week. If I don't say it at the end, I hope you have a lovely Christmas, lovely New Year. I'll probably be on, I think they fly home the 26th, so either I'll do a video on the 26th or the 27th. Uh, here we go. Is that the one? Yes. Um, so yeah, while I tidy it up, maybe we'll go through some of these things. There's this... Oh yeah. I know, I mentioned that this morning at the bloody gath pump, didn't I? Is that the full video? Yes, I didn't stop recording, okay. Uh, Ali Abdal, I don't know if you've seen him on YouTube. I pretty, he's probably in like the self-help niche, I would guess. And I was watching a podcast, him and the Diary of a CAO, or listening to it. And one of the interesting things that was picked up was that he wants things that he struggles with finding motivation for. So let's say one of those being working out. That's a big one for a lot of people to struggle with. Rather than like trying to motivate yourself, if you have the funds, pay someone else to be the motivator for you, like a personal trainer. Now essentially you're just shifting that um, motivation from being an intrinsic thing to being an extrinsic thing, where now someone else is the person to bring you that motivation, sorry. Can't bloody believe it. Root left the lid off my pen. Awful. Yeah, where well, someone else becomes the extrinsic motivation. That's only... But then that brings up the question, like, are you okay with not being the sole motivator of getting you from point A to point B? And I, th I don't think the answer has to be... No, I don't think the answer has to be that you have to be the, the key motivator on everything because there are things that you can outsource to someone else. So why can't that be one of them? I guess in this whole world, why wouldn't you outsource anything? If you can, why wouldn't you outsource anything that you don't enjoy doing? That's actually a big discussion that I've not that Shay and I have had as such. God, it's freezing in here. But it's one that I think about, like, why would you spend, you only have a finite amount of time, why would you spend that time doing something that you're not particularly interested in? You know, like, if you had the option to, let's pick something like, mowing the lawn. Would you like to mow the lawn? I've always told myself that when I have the money, I would pay someone else. But actually, I quite like doing the lawn. It's one of the few tasks that I get to do where I'm just like, my mind is numb. I'm not thinking about anything. There's no pressure on me to uh, realize that I could be working on something else. I just... Honestly, that's probably one of the few times that I'm not thinking about anything else. That and when I'm with Rugi. But then you could argue, like Oliver, are you telling me that you would prefer to mow the lawn versus having out with Rugi? And when you put it like that, I'm like, hmm. That's a hard one to answer, but if you also think about it from the perspective that like you have your own life to lead to. And you have to figure out how to do that. And perhaps that mindlessness I get from mowing the lawn is something that... Uh, I need, you know?
Here's another question, which I think let, I'm going to ask it as a question, but also I think I know, I think I've figured out what the answer is. So how do you get viewers to care about the who doing the thing rather than the thing that gets done? So let's take my, I don't know, needle mat series where I, if you haven't watched it, it's on TikTok and it did, it has done pretty well each time. But how do you get people to want to watch, in this case, me doing something like, again, in this case, the needle mat versus people who are just like, oh, that needle mat looks interesting. What happens in this video? And then they don't care about the person who made the video. I think you have to forget about any kind of how is this made for social media and just think i want to make the video and you just be who you are making that video because that's who you are and if people don't buy into that then that's okay but the people who do buy into that are buying in because it's you you're not changing the way you are or the way you're doing something to try and increase the amount of time someone spends watching a video or increase the number of people it reaches. Like, I like playing that game for the TikToks. That's a, that's a fun game to play for me, especially when I've had all the enjoyment of making the video to begin with, the content. But for like these videos, for example, I don't know. I don't have any expectations. I mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. Would would it be nice to get a nice check from YouTube for the ad revenue to have brands wanting to send me stuff and pay me to just feature it in a video just very naturally? Yeah, that would be really nice. But it's quite cool being able to just to talk and kind of post it, share your thoughts about what your, what's your life like in the world that you live in? Because there are so many people who may think that being a content creator is a glorious lifestyle. They may think they want to do it themselves, but will never get there. And I, In anything you do, there'll be so many people that will try to do that too, but will fail because they just can't be bothered. They realize they don't love it enough or they just can't be bothered. And this content creation thing is a long game to play. So if you're gonna play it, you should be expecting to be in the long haul. Obviously there are the people that make it pretty easily, pretty quickly. But they have, they have it. They figured out it before they even knew they figured out it to do this thing. Like, let's say someone like Bella Porch, that I think she's Filipino girl on TikTok that did the facing head zoom thing. She just fell into fame and she's like really, and nothing against her, of course. I don't see anything special to her in her videos. She doesn't have to be special, but there's just something about her that has captivated people into wanting to watch more. All right, I think that's pretty much it. I think I've got a few pieces of paperwork to go through and then I'll be calling it a day, calling it a week, I guess. Yeah, maybe if I can get those finished before I freeze in here. Okay, well, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get it. We're gonna get going in the new year. I think my focus recently has been in this weird place of not wanting to start off too much, knowing that I'm about to stop for a week. Maybe that's just an excuse of mine. But I've got to start pushing out more TikToks. I want to start pushing out more TikToks. Like I want to get into this. I don't need to, well, I do also need to, but I want to be in this headspace where 
I'm coming up with more creative and fun ways to do what I do and keep it interesting. So that would be my goal. There's no like subscriber or follower count or view count goals, none of that, or make enough money goals. Like those are side goals. But those aren't my, oh, if I reach a million, I have to reach a million subscribers this year because what happens if you get to that? It doesn't mean anything. All right, cool. Well, I'm going to finish off this paperwork. Uh, I hope you have a lovely Christmas. If we don't speak before, Happy New Year, but I think we'll speak before. Yeah. If you're seeing family, enjoy your time with the family. If you're not, enjoy your time with yourself. Later.